What's up internet, it's your soul here and just been watching Rudy Giuliani on Fox News via David Pakman uh, and yeah, <laughs> he's basically freaking out and calling one of the other panellists there an idiot and a moron and all this stuff showing himself to be really um, somebody outside of integrity let's say at this moment somebody not able to hold back from ad hominem attack somebody not willing to stick to the facts and so on. Um, and I was reminded of James Corbett's video about Rudy Giuliani in relation to 9-11, the uh, September the 11th World Trade Center attacks, because during that time, Giuliani was the mayor of New York. And, well, he got up some very dodgy activity there that implicates him in some very serious crimes, many people think, including uh, the New York Fire Department's president and numerous other people within uh, the fire department there as a bare minimum. So I'm just going to show you this few seconds of a clip just to show you what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to play you through the uh, the James Corbett video as well. Responsible, oh, say. please. Yeah, well, you you actually usually say incredibly stupid things. You're a public figure. Yeah, and uh, by the way, do you have any idea that the State Department? So then you know the libel okay, law. Okay, hold on. Shut up, Shut up. Okay, hold on. Shut up. You don't know Everybody. what you're talking Ooh. about. Chris, you Chris, don't know Chris, what you're talking Chris. about, idiot. I do. The state? No, you don't. You just Mr. lied. Mayor, I wish you would stop. You lied, my friend. I wish friend. you would stop, Mr. Mayor. Well, why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him? I wish you would stop. Why don't you tell him to keep his mouth shut so we can tell the truth? Yeah, Chris, okay? just let Rudy just keep say, your lying and then mouth you can shut. Respond. You okay, can... he's <laughs> right. Okay, so you know, shut up, moron, idiot. That's you know, I've been forced actually recently uh, through my own foolishness as a result of. Uh, using some Facebook political groups to pull out the Socrates meme <laughs> with the quote on it basically saying uh, ad hominem attack and insults and slander are the outcome basically of when someone's lost a debate and that's all they've got left. You know, if, you, if you're losing a debate and all you've got left is insults and abuse, then that's evidence in itself that you've lost the debate in a sense. You don't need to abuse people if, you, if you've won, if you're just in the right place. So, you know, without even going into the details there, it's not a good look for him, but let's just take a look at this video because in a way it's much more important. After stepping down as mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani tried to launch himself as a national political leader on the back of the single defining event of his career. September 11th, September 11th. Terrorists are terrorism. September 11th. The flames of hell emanating from those buildings. September 11, fallen towers of the World Trade Center. Terrorists, September 11, 2001. In the end, he failed miserably, with voters immediately seeing his ploy for what it was. Base political pandering. 9-11 was bad. <laughs> I agree with that. God, I can't believe how easy this is. But what many do not realize is that Giuliani's case is not just that of another ghoulish politician parading on the corpses of those who died on his watch for his own political gain. On the day of 9-11, while the remains of the Twin Towers and World Trade Center 7 were still smoldering, one of Mayor Giuliani's first concerns was clearing away the evidence from the crime scene. We were able to move 120 dump trucks out of the city last night, which will give you a sense of the work that was done overnight. It's wild out here. They just keep coming. Look. It doesn't stop. There's more. I think keep thinking it's at the end, and it's not. Despite reassurances that the rapid removal of the evidence from Ground Zero was important for emergency access, this process went far beyond merely clearing a path for rescue workers. As Eric Lawyer, founder of Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, points out, the massive operation to haul away over 1.5 million tons of debris and to sell much of the steel to Chinese firm Bao Steel at discount prices was not just an overzealous approach to clearing the area, but was itself a crime. 9-11 was the greatest loss of life and property damage in U.S. fire history. This should have been the most protected, preserved, over-tested, and thorough investigation of a crime scene in world history. Sadly, it was not. What was it? Well, we know from their own admission 
the majority of the evidence was destroyed. I, like Richard said, 22 years of experience, I've seen a lot of crime scenes, I've never seen anything like this in my life. <clears throat> I, was, I was out of the site, I saw trucks leaving faster than you know, anywhere I've ever seen, but I accepted it at the time, and for years I accepted it, because it was a recovery and rescue operation, and that's normal to have something like that going. Again, we never seen anything like it, but that was expected. What I didn't know for years, what was going on behind the scenes, was that evidence was being destroyed when it was shipped off. Um, by their own admission, um, Tower 7 investigation, this investigation at Tower 7 had no physical evidence. How do you investigate a crime when you've destroyed all the evidence? It doesn't make sense. Um, they also admit that they refuse to test the explosives or to test for explosives or, or residue of thermite. Now, this is what I'm going to go into here just real quickly, is there are national standards for an investigation. That's what all of us are asking for, an investigation that follows national standards and holds people accountable. Needless to say, an investigation of the 9-11 crime scene following the national investigation standards has never been conducted, and never will be, as Giuliani oversaw the illegal destruction of the evidence itself. To add insult to this injury, in 2003, New York City medical examiner Charles Hirsch revealed that in the mad scramble to get rid of the crime scene evidence, human remains from the World Trade Center had been left at the Fresh Kills landfill where the debris was sorted and the steel was sold. In 2007, Eric Beck, a senior supervisor of the recycling facility that sifted the debris, admitted that some of those human remains ended up in a mixture that was used to pave roads and fill potholes in New York City. But as grotesque as such revelations are, they are not the most shocking part of Giuliani's 9-11 story. In the late 1990s, the mayor oversaw the creation of a state-of-the-art $13 million emergency command center to coordinate the city's disaster recovery and response efforts. Located on the 23rd floor of World Trade Center Building 7, just across Vesey Street from the Twin Towers, the center, dubbed by local press at the time as Giuliani's Bunker, included reinforced, bulletproof, and bomb-resistant walls, its own air supply and water tank, beds, showers to accommodate 30 people, and three backup generators. It could be used to monitor all of New York's emergency communications frequencies and was staffed 24 hours a day. And yet, remarkably, on the morning of 9-11, neither Mayor Giuliani nor any other city personnel or police or fire department officials were in the bunker after the Twin Tower strikes. As I told you guys before, it's very, it was very uh, funny. I was on my way to work and uh, traffic was excellent. I received a call that uh, a small Cessna had hit the uh, World Trade Center. And I was asked to go and uh, man the uh, Office of Emergency Management. Upon arriving into the OEM uh, EOC, we noticed that everybody was gone. I saw coffee that was on a desk. Still, the smoke was still coming off the coffee. I saw, I saw uh, half-eaten sandwiches. So why wasn't the mayor and the city's emergency personnel in the location that had been purpose-built for just such an event? According to Giuliani, they had been told to evacuate because they had been given a warning that the Twin Towers were going to collapse a warning that was evidently not passed on to any of the emergency personnel that were still working in the buildings. I went down to the scene and we set up a headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. And it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10, 15 minutes and finally found an exit got out, walked north, and took a lot of people with us. Giuliani, in his own words, has admitted that he was warned that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. This despite the fact that there was no possible way for this to be predicted in the first hour of the unfolding disaster. Even more incredibly, despite being given this warning, no effort was made to pass it on to the police firefighters, and other responders who were still working in and around the buildings. When precisely was this warning given, and by whom? Why, despite acting on this warning himself, did Giuliani make no effort to pass the warning on to others? Predictably, 
When confronted with these questions by activists during his 2008 presidential campaign, Giuliani merely smiled and denied that he had ever received such a warning. You reported to Peter Jennings that on 9-11 that the World Trade, the towers were going to collapse and, <clears throat> excuse me, no steel structure in, the, in, in history has ever collapsed due to a fire. How come the people in the buildings weren't notified? And who, who else knew right. about this? And, yeah. and how do you sleep at night? Ma'am, I didn't know that the towers were going to collapse. So you reported it to Peter Jennings. Jennings. No, okay. no. You said and, out to Peter Jennings on ABC and video, also, you indeed said that the towers, uh, you were notified the towers were going to collapse while you were in some, um, not, sh not sure exactly where you were prior to, but you said it on ABC video with Peter Jennings in an interview um, that you were aware that the towers were going to collapse in advance. We'd like to know who told you the towers were going to collapse in advance, sir. And also we'd like to know who else you told. Well, the fact is that uh, I didn't realize the towers would collapse. I never realized that. So where was the mayor on 9-11? On Pier 92, which was already set up as a functional command center due to a full-scale emergency drill by FEMA that, by a remarkable coincidence, had been scheduled for the following day. And we selected Pier 92 as our command center. And the reason Pier 92 was selected as the command center was because on the next day, on September 12th, Pier 92 was going to have a drill. It had hundreds of people here, from FEMA, from the federal government, from the state, from the state emergency management office, and they were getting ready for a drill for biochemical attack. So that was going to be the place they were going to have the drill. The equipment was already there. So we were able to establish a command center there within three days that was two and a half to three times bigger than the command center that we had lost at Seven World Trade Center. And it was from there that the rest of the search and rescue effort was, um, was completed. Mayor Giuliani oversaw the illegal destruction of the 9-11 crime scene and is criminally liable for the deaths of hundreds of emergency workers for not passing on prior warnings about the collapses of the Twin Towers. It is no wonder, then, that the Fire Department of New York so passionately detests Giuliani for his actions in disgracing their fallen brothers and covering up the 9-11 crime. Rudy Giuliani has used the horrible events of September 11, 2001, to create a carefully crafted persona. But the fact is, what Rudy portrays is not a full picture of the decisions made that led, in our view, to the unnecessary deaths of our FDNY members and the attempt to stop the dignified recovery of those lost. The urban legend of America's mayor needs to be balanced by the truth. So what is the reward for Giuliani's criminal actions on 9-11? An offer to become the head of the Department of Homeland Security in the event of a Trump presidency, of course. This is the state of American politics, and this is precisely why a true investigation of what happened on 9-11 never has, and never will, be conducted by the U.S. government itself. Okay, so if you think back, if you saw some of the videos I put out recently on Building 7, uh, the, the uh, study from the Alaska Fairbanks University that took four years to complete concluded uh, that Building 7 came down pretty much as a result of it. Um, they didn't mention controlled demolition, but uh, they said that really the only way the building could have come down as we saw that it did was as a result of all of the supporting columns breaking or failing at the same time, which really is only likely to happen due to some sort of demolition. Then I also put out a video showing you uh, numerous people on the ground, firefighters and so on, people hearing warnings from the firefighting teams, uh, fire department effectively that Building 7 was going to come down in advance of it coming down. And also uh, the BBC reported that it had come down before it even came down. So clearly lots of people from different backgrounds and uh, agencies knew that Building 7 was going to come down in advance. And yet, it, even the NIST report put out by the government states that in the history of still tall buildings, still, <laughs> still uh, constructed tall buildings, None of them have ever previously come down due to fire. So why would people have been thinking that it was going to come down due to fire? It wasn't hit by any planes. And then when you add in this evidence about Rudy Giuliani and the command centre that they had there and the fact that they weren't in it and that they were at this 
conveniently ready massive response center uh, due to a, um, a planned training event the next day, strangely matching the numerous training events that were happening f- within the Air Force uh, and uh, flight traffic control systems and so on on that day. Basically, they were they had on their radar screens false airliners that were there as part of a training program, and they were actually simulating terrorist attack on planes at the exact time the terrorist attack on planes happened. And obviously, that kind of thing doesn't happen very often in real life. Normally, what are the chances that they're going to have a live simulation of that event happening at the same time it actually happened? I would say pretty much nothing. Um, and then, oh, we also happen to have another event on the pier there for bioweapons attack. So we've got this massive response center right next to where one of the actual attacks is targeted. Now that's that's convenient, isn't it? And funnily enough, the mayor and all his cronies don't happen to be in the building that's about to come down, uh, which they should have been in, which was you know heavily protected and funded for that purpose. And then again. He lies, and you see him lying and saying that he never said that, and I didn't know it was going to come down in advance when we got the recording showing that he did. So, you know, shut up, moron, I think probably applies more to Giuliani than to anyone he could ever speak to. Um, You know, I really would like to see more people looking into this. Don't blindly trust these people. I would say, at the very least, it's pretty clear that this person is deeply untrustworthy, and at the very most, He's probably a criminal psychopath and one of the most evil people alive. So, you know, I don't say that lightheartedly or easily. Uh, I wish it wasn't true. I wish there were no such people on this planet. But uh, there are, and the more people realise that, the quicker we can take steps to bring balance and peace in some way to the planet, which we haven't had for a very long time. Uh, And part of the reason why we haven't had that for a very long time is that people don't challenge those people who find themselves in positions of authority enough and and they often vote for them and think that it's a good thing that we have those people in positions of authority when it really isn't you couldn't really it's difficult to imagine a worse situation than having such people being able to direct massive amounts of funds and human activity so yeah i'd really like it if more people looked into this there's a whole series of videos on 9-11 whistleblowers and suspects from james corbett all of them are very difficult to debunk i've never in fact to be honest i've never seen anyone debunk any of them uh, if you want to, then try, you know, go for it and share it with the world and maybe we'll all learn something. But in my experience, you're probably not going to succeed. So uh, as always, please leave me a comment underneath if you've uh, got anything to add to this. And please do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this or you found it useful. And a vote on Steam if you're on Steam. Sign up to Steam if you're not on Steam. Why aren't you there? It's Uncensored Social Network, which actually pays you to post and comment, which obviously is... Uh, a massive upgrade on Facebook and Twitter and Google and so on who are there more to control you than they are to help you and definitely not there to pay you. Uh, so yeah, share along and uh, until next time, peace.